it's time for Batman and Homelander's top five teams in the NFL. Definitely. So Homelander will start off with number five. This team might surprise you because nobody expected this team to be anywhere in competitiveness. But now they are top of their division. They have a great run game. Had a great draft. I'm actually putting the Seattle Seahawks at number five. Whoa. And why am I putting the Seahawks at number five? Okay. Well, these other four teams that are in this top five, they are a consensus top four team. But everybody else in the NFC and everybody else in the and just the entire league at this point, I don't trust. You know, the Dolphins, they had their issues with um, with the injuries with Tua. They've lost three straight. They beat the uh, the Steelers, but anybody should beat the Steelers at this point. Ravens, I don't trust. I don't trust the Chargers, the Vikings. I mean, yes, maybe I should put the Vikings here. Maybe that's who you have. But the Vikings, I can't. I'm sorry. I can't trust. I, like if we're talking about top five teams, I can't trust Kirk Cousins at, at this time. I can't quite put my arms around him. But for the Seahawks, I can because Geno Smith has played like a top five quarterback. Numbers say so. Don't come at me. Running game has been very effective, which is something they've never had good things of. Their wide receiver core of DK and Tyler Lockett. Nice. And their defense. They've had the best draft in the Seahawks uh, history since the Legion of Boom. So, yeah, Seahawks at number five. Yeah. I see why you put them there. Um, But I have to go with the Vikings still. You still have to stay with the Vikings at number five. It's the Vikings, five and one, top of their division. They've only lost one game. They're turning those close games into wins so far this year. Um, Kevin O'Connell, definitely a pro- an improvement from Mike Zimmer. You can tell Kirk Cousins doesn't feel hated by his coach anymore, which is always good for a team. And then Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, Devin Cook, and then they added talent with Zaria Smith on defense. You still have Patrick Peterson there too. So I think overall the Vikings, like – They've only lost one game, and I trust their weapons a lot more than any other team in the NFL right now. And then the Seattle Seahawks just just have to show a little bit more consistency and have to take down someone great and really get in a battle and then come out on top. And I feel like the Vikings have been proven over the years um, that they're a talented team, and they deserve to be at number five. Yeah, respect it. Number four, and these four teams I feel like we're about to mention, you can kind of shuffle the deck either way, but these four teams I think are the the locks for the top four teams in the NFL right now. Number four, I have the Cincinnati Bengals. Everything that I've seen the last two weeks from them shows me that they are back to Super Bowl form and maybe a little bit better. Better offensive line, better tight end in Hayden Hurst. Just uh, Jamar Chase is going to get his. So are the other receivers on that team. Their defense, as long as their defense can get back to the Super Bowl level, then the Bengals will absolutely be in the hunt for the other two AFC teams that will be named later. And, um, yeah, so I have the Bengals at number four. Yeah, number four um, of the Buffalo Bills, just because I think all the teams in front of them have either proven themselves or – have a more talented roster. The Bills, it's no shame being number four in the top five, but you have to make the run to the Super Bowl. Josh Allen has to be the man. You can't have these wins where you lose nine to three um, to the, uh, or nine to six to the Jaguars like you did last year. You have to show a more consistent run game, but they're still the fourth best team in football out of 32 teams. There's no shame in that. I just think the teams ahead of them are just better than them, have better weapons, have equivalent defenses. But Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs, Gabriel Davis, Dawson Knox, it's all there. It's like you're the number four team. Don't be mad about it. You're still the fourth best team in football, and all these teams are interchangeable. So if you think the Bills are better than any team I have in front of them? Yeah, I get it. But at the same time, I just I just think the other teams are better. Yeah, I have the Bills at number three. I think the Bills have a better overall roster than the Bengals. Um, Talent-wise, they got Vaughn Miller, who's been fantastic for them. That defense, super elite, bunch of thugs on that defense. And they got Josh Allen, who is, I mean, say what you will about Josh Allen, everything that's known. Joe Burrow, Patty Mahomes, Joe Burrow, all talented guys, absolutely. Um, 
But yeah, I have the Bengals at three. Not because, you know, I think that I think the Chiefs and the Bills can go hand in hand for this, but talent wise, roster might have the most complete roster in the NFL. They have Stefan Diggs, one of the best receivers in the league, Josh Allen. That connect is beautiful. And then their defense. So with that alone, I have the Bengals at uh, the the Bills at three. Like I'd mentioned before, these four teams can go interchangeable, but I have the Bills at three. Like we said, third best team in the NFL. It's pretty damn good. And the teams ahead of them, one of them is undefeated. And then the other one, honestly, record wise, kind of has he beat um, historically. So that's why I have them there. Yeah. At number three, I have the Kansas City Chiefs. I think the Chiefs okay. had a tough loss versus the Bills. Um, but you came back and you showed Juju Smith Schuster, Belda Scantling, can be hundred yard receiver guys in the same game. Your defense showed up and stopped the 49ers when you needed to and kind of slanted the game, gave you all the me- momentum. This was probably their most impressive win in the season because you're going on the road to San Francisco to play a tough 49ers team who got back Nick Bosa and Fred Warner in this game. And then you have Samuel Kittle, McCaffrey making his debut, Jeff Wilson, who's not a bad player by any means, definitely better than any running back that the Bills had. And then you have Ayuk, Juwan Jennings there. So the fact that the Chiefs were able to bounce back with a blowout with the team, a lot of people thought was a contender or a top five team. I think that's really impressive. Mahomes, Still my favorite to win MVP. Showed it again why on Sunday. So I have to go with the Bills at number three. Just because the teams ahead of them think more talented roster and the other team has shown they can beat them and the Chiefs haven't shown an ability to do that just yet. I disagree. I have the Chiefs at number two and the team ahead of them is undefeated. So the Chiefs, every time I see their offense function, it's it's a well-oiled machine. Not many turnovers. Um, their run game with Isaiah Pacheco and Clyde edwards Lair, Jerick McKinnon, those guys have been getting it done on the ground. Something that didn't really happen in years past, which is exciting. Their defense is coming to their own much sooner than what they usually are. Typically comes around in the second half. So if their defense is playing well, their run game is performing well, and Patrick Mahomes having one of his best seasons as a pro with all these new guys around him, I like the Chiefs a lot, and I think they're the best team in the AFC. Yeah, I disagree. Because the team I had ahead of them beat them last year twice. I have the Cincinnati Bengals at number two. For all the reasons you said, Chiefs offense is a well-oiled machine. You have Juju Smith-Schuster and Valdez Scantling. Well, the Bengals have Jamar Chase, who is able to light up any team and is a game wrecker for any defense. And the Chiefs, well, they are a well-oiled machine this year. Didn't show an ability to beat the Bengals when they were up. The Bengals came back twice to beat them. Joe Burrow came back from down 3-21 to 21 at halftime. That's a huge loss. So far, the Bengals have showed that they're back to themselves. I like their defense better. And if we're talking about the Bills' defense being better than the Bengals, the Bills' defense gave up two field goals in 13 seconds to the Chiefs twice. In back-to-back games. The last two times they played the Chiefs, they've given up a field goal in 13 seconds. That just can't happen. The Bengals' defense showed an ability to actually stop Tyree Kill and Kelsey and Juju Smith-Schuster and Valdez Scantling while they're good replacements. They still don't have the same big play potential that they did um, with Tyree Kill and Kelsey, which is why I have to put the Bengals ahead because of Jamar Chase and Tyler Boyd being much better than any receiver on the Bengals or the Bills. I think Jamar Chase is ahead of Stephon Diggs. I think he's a much more of a big game wreck your whole defense threat. And I just think the Bills defense hasn't showed up in big games where they let the Chiefs throw all over them and then struggled against the Ravens this year. So I have to put the Bengals and Joe Burrow at number two because they won the AFC last year. And now the past two games they've shown where they're at the same spot, if not better, with their offensive line additions. Yeah, I like the Bengals a lot. My only problem with your take is that 
Um, a lot of the things they were talking about are from last year. And we move on to next this new year. So I do think that they have a better um, overall weapon. Like their weapons are better than both teams. I think Patrick Mahomes is better than Joe Burrow, though. So that's the only it's reason why. It's not as far as you would think, though. No, I don't think it's far that far. But I do think that Patty Mahomes does have an edge over Joe Burrow for a number of reasons. He and hasn't that's shown why it yet. He hasn't shown it yet? Not when they played. No, he's lost in Cincinnati and he's lost in Kansas City. And Joe Burrow outplayed him both times. Mm, I think that the first game... Joe Jack. Burrow played him, and then Joe Burrow came out on top because Mahomes threw the pick that ended the game in overtime. And the Chiefs had the ball. They got the ball first. You have Tyreek and Kelsey, which is the best duo in that game. You were up 21-3, to and you let the Bengals come back on you, and Joe Burrow had the mental toughness to not quit and come back in that game. And then Jamar Chase and the Bengals' defense – is better than anything the Chiefs have going for them. And it's like with the gap not being that big, and then you still have Joe Mixon, who everyone can agree is better than Clyde edwards Lair. Yeah, no one can doubt that. No, no doubt. Again, these are two teams and two quarterbacks that are, are if they're one in three or two and four, whatever they might be, they're both hand in hand. I just like the Chiefs a little bit more. Um, number one team, though, which we both agree on, the Eagles. They're 7-0. and oh, Great coaching. Great quarterback play, great run game, great wide receivers, great defense. I mean, everything around them. The 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 Eagles comprehensively can win multiple different ways. We saw that with um, pretty much every game of theirs, whether it be a strategic game with the Cowboys, more of a low scoring game, or just blowing the brakes off of different teams. They can win a number of different ways, and that's why the Eagles have to be number one. And the fact that they're undefeated. Yeah, they're undefeated. They added AJ Brown. They have Devontae Smith. Um, they have Kenneth Gainwell, Miles Sanders, Quez Watkins, Dallas Goddard, Nick Sariani is the best coach in football this year. And then you add James Brand, James Bradbury, Darius Slay. Then you have Jordan Davis, Fletcher Cox, Brandon Graham, all of those players still on that team. So you have the best defense in football and then one of the best young quarterbacks in football and one of the best young head coaches it's not really close right now. They haven't lost the game. They haven't shown a moment of weakness, and they haven't shown a moment where they're satisfied. Jalen Hurts is annoyed when he's asked about being undefeated. Jason Kelsey is a leader in that locker room who's been to a Super Bowl, done it before. They have Super Bowl experience on that roster still, and I think in the NFC, it's not even close. The gap between the Eagles and everyone else is so big and then you have to see an idiot like Colin Cowherd get on and defend Russell Wilson and the Broncos, talk about how it's not his fault, and then try and bait someone like Sean Payton into disrespecting Jalen Hurts. It's like Colin Cowherd's like, well, the Eagles aren't really there because Jalen Hurts can't throw the ball. And then you have someone like Sean Payton go on like, no, Jalen Hurts can throw the ball. He's gotten better this year. You have A.J. Brown. You can tell how much the Titans miss him. They're legit. It's just like... It's embarrassing at this point, the way some people were disrespecting the Eagles. And then they showed you versus the Cowboys when Demarcus Lawrence was like, yeah, well, Jalen Hurts hasn't played the Cowboys. Like, well, Jalen Hurts made Mark- Micah Parsons look silly. Have the Eagles not faced the Cowboys yet, or did the Cowboys not face the Eagles? How did yeah. that game turn out? Eagles took care of business. They diced them apart. And this is going for a defense that probably top five in the league right now. And they diced them apart. I mean, it was, it looked pretty easy overall. I mean, yes, they had some stops, but overall, I mean, picked them apart, got those first downs, got the points on the board, and ultimately that's kind of how they won that game. Yeah, and when they 